What up, Ring Crew Army, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Square Circle Podcast. I am your host, Marie Shadows. And on this episode of the Square Circle Podcast, I will be reviewing AEW Dynamite that debuted on March 3rd, 2021. I have taken a bit of a break reviewing AEW Dynamite creatively. The product that AEW presented us within 2019 and 2020 and now we're in 2021 hasn't really been as smart as they usually are and I'm starting to doubt certain things that they're doing starting to doubt certain stories that are being presented the wrong stories that are being presented for the talent that they have like if you go back into my archive of the anchor.fm forward slash square circle podcast, those episodes will not be on YouTube as of yet. But for the sake of the point, I have criticized AEW and gave solutions on how to fix things. But again, it just seems like the same old thing. And again and again, it's not a bad product. I just tend to think of professional wrestling in a different way, in a different way ideology than most of those guys there there are certain there are a lot of opportunities that get missed and i understand you could only do but so far with the limited of staff that you have but i really want to know when they're going to upgrade their staff so that way they can have more people and have more video packages and be an overall better product than their competition out there even though in professional wrestling Right now, there really isn't much of a competition, but if you really want to have good storytelling, you upgrade your staff and you make sure that every single wrestler has their own story to tell. You make sure that every single wrestler can let you know their motivations of why they're doing this, why they're in the business, why they want to go after Kenny Omega to take the AEW World Championship from him. Hell, why would someone want to go after John Moxley to take that IWGP United States heavyweight championship from him because now the quote-unquote forbidden door is open so I guess almost all the titles are on the line for these guys so as a wrestler you should have some motivations as to do what you do but let me not get into a whole rant about that because then this would be a really long podcast episode about AEW Dynamite what I really want to do about AEW Dynamite is to just quickly go through the match card give my thoughts on it and then at the end we're going to wrap it up with some predictions for AEW Revolution come this Sunday March 7th and if you don't know March 7th is uh Chase Owens's birthday yes I am including a Bullet Club member in this podcast so you know I already said happy birthday to him and he's getting some birthday love this whole entire week but March 7th is his birthday, so make sure to tag him on Twitter at RealChaseOwens or visit the Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash crownjewelbc. All right, let's dive right into AEW Dynamite. AEW Dynamite kicks off with the mixed tag match. We had Cody teaming up with Red Velvet to take on Shaq and Jade Cargill, and that was a really good match to start off Dynamite. Shaq is really good in the ring. He knows what to do. He may not be the most athletic person in that ring, but he gave it his all, and that is all that we ask for. Red Velvet and Jade are the stars of this match. They have a lot of potential, and with more matches down the line, they're going to be something special in AEW and also in the AEW Women's Division. And I look forward to seeing more for what they can achieve together and separately. Jade looks like a million bucks every time she comes out and she poses on the stage. And Red Velvet has a unique glow about her whenever she's inside the ring and her ring gear looks great and her technical ability is also great in the ring as well so i'm very proud that jade and velvet did a very fantastic job in this match and i'm happy that they allowed the women to get the pin victory in this match jade came in and did the glamazon finisher that beth phoenix would have I don't know the regular name for it, but 
That is what she did to Red Velvet in order to pick up the one, two, three in this match. Next, we had Ray Phoenix and Pac going against D3 and John Skyler. Straight up squash match could have been saved for AW Dark. I blinked and I definitely missed it. After that tag team, we get the Inner Circle press conference, which is just setting up for AW Revolution. MJF and Jericho will be taking on the Young Bucks for their AEW World Tag Team Championships. Media came in to ask questions to Chris Jericho and MJF. And then the Young Bucks said their piece about their dad and how personal this is. If this was done with FTR or Santana and Ortiz, it would make a lot more sense because they feel and look like the type that would definitely involve someone else's parent to make it personal i can't really see jericho and mjf really do that together as a team if mjf was by himself and with somebody else if it was like mjf and warlow doing this then yeah that'll be that would definitely make a lot of sense but jericho and mjf attacking papa buck i know it's for the sake of the story and for the sake of kayfabe but it just does not seem like they would do that to make it personal there wasn't enough build to make it personal as to why they will want to mess with Papa Buck. Well, not to my knowledge anyway. So, yeah, it was just a regular press conference and then it got out of hand and the Good Brothers came out to help the Young Bucks and they had tables everywhere. Nick jumped off of one of the AEW sets onto either Santana and Ortiz on his table and then Matt did an elbow drop to the other member of Pride and Powerful. After the press conference, we have a tag team match. FTR with Tully taking on Jurassic Express. This was an amazing moment. I got to mark out and see Tully wrestle, and it was fantastic. Here are my quick little notes. Jungle Boy is super athletic and super amazing. One of these days, he is going to break away from Jurassic Express and maybe do great on his own he needs a shot at the tnt championship one of these days maybe within this year or next year but i don't think him being with jurassic express helps him anymore because of his great athleticism and the way that he's able to handle himself in the ring command the ring and also command the technical prowess that he has so while Jungle Boy is on the outside, he does the snare trap on the floor. Dax hits Jungle Boy with a shoe that was given to him by J.J. Dillon, who was on the outside with FTR and Telly. However, when Dax goes for the cover, Jungle Boy kicks out. Tully then decides to tease everybody with his attempted suicide dive. It even got me. It got a pop out of me. After that, Dax body slams Jungle Boy into the floor. He ripped off the protective pads on the floor and then body slammed him. FTR with Telly was keeping the ring cut in half by keeping Jungle Boy on their side for most of the match. Double German suplex by Luchasaurus to FTR. A Hurricanrana into a body slam. This was done by Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus onto cash or maybe dax a swinging ddt to luchasaurus from cash top rope suplex splash on jungle boy but jungle boy kicks out slingshot suplex by tully on marco that looked really amazing then the tail whip from luchasaurus to tully ftr does their finisher with tully's assistance and tully picks up the victory over luchasaurus in this six-man tag it was an amazing six-man tag from start to finish it was a mark out moment and i really enjoyed the fact that tully was in a wrestling ring after that we get a mini little segment with paul white who is a big show he recently signed with aew and him and tony shivani will be doing monday nights on youtube with the new aew dark evolution or elevation show not all of AEW's names roll off the tongue like AEW dynamite so forgive me for mispronouncing certain names 
After that, we get our women's match. It is Rio taking on Nyla Rose. And luckily, Rio won that match. So now it will be Rio versus Sheeta at Revolution for the AW Women's Championship title. Next, we have a Sting segment where Sting gets cut off by Ricky Starks in this promo. And then Team Taz jumps Sting and out comes Darby. Darby saves Sting. After that, we get 10 of the Dark Order taking on Max Caster. The winner of this match is Max Caster. It was a straight up wrestling match. The only reason why Max Caster won is because... Jack Evans came out and took the boom box, if you will, and hit it over 10 of the Dark Order. And that allowed Max Caster to pick up the victory via pinfall. And then you see Money Matt Hardy at the entrance of the ramp. Giving Jack Evans his money for interfering, giving him $4,200. Hey, Big Money Matt, if you want to swing some money over towards the Square Circle podcast... That would be great. You could definitely leave a tip at anchor.fm forward slash square circle podcast. And after that, we have our main event, which is Hangman Adam Page teaming up with John Silver of the Dark Order to take on Mark Quinn and Matt Hardy. This was an interesting match. This match sets up for Revolution where it will be Hangman Adam Page taking on Money Matt Hardy. So my little tiny notes for this match is that Silver got the blind tag and Hangman didn't really care. Hangman thought about it and he was like, all right, I'll let John go in there and do what he has to do. John Silver is very great at all of his combos that he does to his opponents, the very quick kicks and chops and all that strength that he has. And then there was a beautiful combination between Hangman and John Silver. And then the Buckshot Lariat to Mark Quinn allows Hangman Adam Page to pick up the victory in this match. And after the match, Matt Hardy comes back in and starts beating up Hangman Adam Page with the microphone and telling him that this Sunday, Hangman Adam Page will lose to Matt Hardy. Dark Order comes out and Dark Order attacks Matt Hardy and also Mark Quinn. And then the whole entire locker room comes out and fights each other in preparation for Sunday at Revolution. And talking about Revolution, let's just quickly run down the card and my predictions. On the buy-in, we have Riho teaming up with Thunder Rosa to take on Dr. Britt Baker and Rebel. My prediction, Riho and Thunder Rosa will win this match on the buy-in. And this will cause a interference when we get to the AEW Women's Championship match. Where Thunder Rosa, I'm calling it now, Thunder Rosa will interfere in the Hikaru Shida versus Rio match on the card. After the buy-in, we are going to probably get the Casino Tag Team Royale. It's a bunch of tag teams on the roster competing against one another to get another opportunity to fight whoever becomes champion at the end of that AEW Tag Team Championship match that we have on the card as well. My pick for that will be John Silva and Alex Reynolds. They are ready to get some tag team gold around their waist. So is Eva Uno and Stu Grayson. They can challenge each other for those titles and that'll be a very good series. Next, we have Miro and Kip Sabian taking on Orange Cassie and Chuck Taylor. This match, in my honest opinion, should have been on the buy-in. It is not worthy to be on the AEW card. They should have put the women's tag team match on the main card and put the Miro and Kip Sabian versus Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor on the buy-in. However, here goes my prediction for that match. Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor, just because I want that whole story to end. Next, we have Face of the Revolution ladder match. Cody needs to stop coming up with gimmick titles. Seriously. It is going to be Cody Rose versus Scorpio Sky versus Penta versus Lance Archer versus Max Caster and a surprise entrant. Winner earns a TNT title opportunity. 
my pick for this would definitely be Scorpio Sky. Scorpio Sky needs some type of momentum here, even though he's been out with an injury. But 2021 should probably, probably, 2021 should probably be Scorpio Sky's year. And the surprise entrant should be Sean Spears. So if Scorpio Sky doesn't win, Sean Spears would definitely be my backup pick for this match. Next, we have Hangman Adam Page versus Matt Hardy. This is a big money match. I want Hangman Adam Page to win this match, not because to get Matt Hardy's money, but just to end this story, because I personally believe that this story is doing more harm to Hangman's story and character than it should. And I've already went on a rant previous podcast episodes ago about why Hangman Adam Page needs to refocus and try to get the belt off of Kenny Omega. Not going to go into it. You guys can definitely go in the backlog of my podcast episodes and hear me rant about it. Next, we have Brian Cage and Ricky Starks taking on Darby Allen and Sting in a street fight. Darby Allen and Sting are probably winning this match against Team Taz. I do not see Team Taz... Getting the victory, I do see Hook and Will Hobbs interfering, yet Darby Allen and Sting will get the upset victory over Team Taz, and hopefully that story will end. I do not think that Sting is helping Darby in any aspect of Darby's career as TNT champion, but I could definitely be wrong. But it doesn't feel like Sting is really helping Darby with anything. It's cool that Sting is there. I'm not saying that he shouldn't be. It's just his involvement in a lot of things just doesn't work with Darby Allen at the moment. Next, we have the AEW Tag Team Championships that will be on the line. The Young Bucks are our champions. They're taking on the inner circle, Chris Jericho and MJF. My pick is that the Young Bucks will retain the AEW Tag Team Championships. I do not see them giving it to the inner circle of Chris Jericho and MJF. After that, we have the AEW Women's Championship title on the line. It is Hikaru Shida, our champion, taking on Rio. Apologies for not even trying to say her last name. I do not want to mess it up, and I do not want to cause any disrespect towards that. So, like I said a little bit earlier with the predictions, Thunder Rose is going to come in and mess this match up. Hikaru Shida will still retain the title, I just think that Thunder Rosa may help Sheeta retain the title. So that way it can set up for Thunder Rosa versus Hikaru Sheeta for the title. But my pick, whether or not that prediction happens, will be Hikaru Sheeta retaining the AEW Women's Championship title. And now we have the main event. Our AEW World Champion Kenny Omega will defend his AEW World Championship against Jon Moxley in an... In an exploding barbed wire death match. Why? Why do we have this? Why do we need this? I understand that every time Kenny tries to face John Moxley, John Moxley keeps on coming back. John Moxley does not stay away. John Moxley does not quit. John Moxley is all like, hey, I could still take you on because I could still breathe. I get it. I get that type of storytelling. And sometimes I would want it. But at this stage in their lives and at this stage in their career, they do not need an exploding barbed wire death match to prove anything to the fans. I do not care if Kenny Omega wants to explore other options in professional wrestling. He's not getting any younger. And he is still my number one, even though Jay White is slowly creeping up to take that spot. And eventually Jay White will take that spot. Regardless of that, We do not need an exploding barbed wire death match. How come they didn't settle for another lights out, unsanctioned match, a cage match, like something else other than I have to worry about both of their safeties because these guys are great athletes and these guys can tell amazing stories in professional wrestling. Why couldn't we get an ordinary match and just call it like it is and put a stipulation I want to go normal. 
I don't want to be afraid that Kenny might get a long term injury and there we go. Or John Moxie gets a long term injury and there we go. Like, I'm more concerned about their safety than being hyped for this match. And I know that both of them will be completely safe and they will know what they're going to be doing. And, you know, they will guide the match and we'll all be there at the edge of our seats. But on paper, I probably would have been like, no, we're not doing this. We're going to be saving lives. We're not going to try to kill each other and take another life. No. Anyway, those are my concerns about this exploding barbed wire death match. It should never happen. It makes no sense to do it. Especially, like I said, at this stage of their careers and definitely lives. So my prediction for this main event will definitely be Kenny Omega retaining the AEW World Championship title. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been my assessment of AEW Dynamite along with the AEW Revolution predictions. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do, make sure to show this podcast episode and the podcast itself some love. You can find the audio version of this podcast episode on anchor.fm forward slash square circle podcast. While you're on anchor, you can also leave me a voice message if you disagree or agree with anything that I've said on this podcast. And if you want to be generous, you can also leave me a tip. It is not included. It is not forced. It is definitely appreciated if you want to leave me a tip of any kind. You will definitely see the video version of this podcast episode over on YouTube. Head over to youtube.com forward slash square circle podcast. I am at 66 subscribers, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Leave me a like and drop me a comment as well. The more that you watch my videos, the more it will go into the algorithm. The more that you comment, it will definitely go into the algorithm and When you hit that subscribe button, I definitely know that my podcast brings you some type of value into your professional wrestling lives. If you are on Twitter, I have some great news. I'm also on Twitter and I'm very active on Twitter. So please make sure to follow me at Marie underscore shadows over on the Twitter side. And if you want to take it a step further, I currently am growing a newsletter community. It's very simple. All you have to do is add your email to the list and you get to read my writings on professional wrestling. Head over to theringcrew.substack.com. All right, guys, you have been listening to an episode of the Square Circle Podcast. I am your host, Marie Shadows, and I'll see you guys on the next one.